So just continuing and finishing these notes, there are three steps to finding an inverse of a logarithmic or exponential function. And in fact, they are literally the same three steps for finding an inverse from when we learned how to find an inverse. The first step is to switch the X and Y. You're just gonna replace them with each other. That's always what we're doing with inverses. The inputs and the outputs switch. The domains and ranges switch. The X and Y switches. Second step is we're going to resolve the equation for y using rules from previous pages. So thinking about how to solve a logarithm or how to solve an exponential, which we just went over. And then the last step is we're going to write it in the proper form. So we're going to write it with the function inverse, f inverse of x format. We're going to put a nice little bow at the end. That way it looks correct. This is the very last page of the packet from last time, those of you who are still shuffling through your things. Okay, so if we look at the example I gave you, it says find the inverse of the function f of x equal to 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 4 power minus 15. Now if we notice, that's exactly what I did, or exactly what I did is the three steps in the little box up there. I first switched the x and the y. Did y'all notice that f of x became x and x became y? That's step one, we switched the x and y. Everything else from here on out is solving for y. We had to learn how to solve for y, which is what we did at the beginning of these notes last time. All of the different steps, log looping, isolating, all of that good stuff. That's what I'm doing here. So from the first step, switching x and y to the second, I added 15 to both sides, then divided by 3. Because remember, our first goal when solving an exponential is to isolate the base and power. That's what I've done here. The base 2 is by itself 2. I held up three fingers when I said 2. The base 2 with the power y plus 4 is by itself. At this point, we do the log loop. Log with a base of 2, and then I switch the sides of the um, exponent and the equal to's. Now, I've written this kind of in a confusing format, so if you would please add some parentheses here. This whole thing is inside that logarithm. I recommend when you write problems, you put them all in parentheses or else you're going to get lost on what's inside and what's outside of the logarithm. So now again, just to isolate why we have to subtract four from both sides, this is where it's really important to use those parentheses so that you don't accidentally put that minus four inside the logarithm. It doesn't go inside the logarithm. We are subtracting it from the logarithm. And once y is isolated, we just give it the correct format, which is f inverse of x is equal to log base two of, again, parentheses, x plus 15 over 3, subtract 4. So finding the inverse, same steps. We just had to add the new ideas of how to solve logarithms and exponentials to what we already knew about solving for inverse functions. Can we do this next one together? Cool. The first step when I'm solving to find an inverse is to do what? Switch x and y. All right, so g of x becomes x, then minus 3 log base 5 of y minus 4 plus 6. Check. Now my job is to get the y by itself. To get the y by itself, I'm going to have to solve the logarithm since it's inside the logarithm. The steps I learned last time to solve a logarithm, bless you, is to isolate the logarithm first, then do the log loop. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides so that the term with a logarithm is starting to be isolated. But I have to divide by negative 3 to make that happen. When I divide by negative 3, um, this is a fun fact. When you divide by a negative number, you can switch the order of subtraction and then just divide by the positive 3. So what I mean by that is, you see how I switch x and 6? Multiplying it by negative 1, not multiplying, dividing by negative 1 switches the order because we switch the signs. X becomes negative, 6 becomes positive, but I just switched the order so that the positive thing comes first. Equal to log base 5 of y minus 4. Okay, we've got the logarithm isolated. That so far has just been algebra steps. Now we do a little bit of logarithms where we keep the base the same and raise it to the opposite power. So this is 5 raised to the 6 minus x divided by 3 power equal to y minus 4. Do we follow that step? Base never changes. The base of the logarithm was 5, so I keep the base 5. Should have one more step to solve for y. What is it? 
plus four on both sides. I'm gonna switch the order I'm writing it so the y comes first. So this is five raised to the six minus x divided by three, all of that plus four. Now, of course, to be fancy, we do put it in the correct notation at the very, very end. So we give it F inverse. Just kidding, this one's G. G inverse of X equal to five raised to the six minus X over three power plus four. Yes, you can have crazy complicated exponents. Okay, that's the only part we didn't get to from the notes last time, but again, it kind of makes sense. We've done inverses, now we did logarithms, so we just combined the two ideas to solve logarithm inverses. Now this idea of using the inverse to solve is gonna be really helpful in the next set of notes. So let's switch on over to the notes you picked up today when you walked in, um, and we'll get started. If you didn't grab a calculator, you 1,000% need one today.